deoxyribonucleic acid, commonly known as DNA, is the building block of every living thing. It's the reason we are humans, and more importantly, the reason we have the features we have today, and have judiciously passed down for generations. It is our greatest asset, our greatest treasure, and our ultimate marker that we once existed. However, for all of its personalized hype, modern research has shown that your DNA just might not be completely yours. But how is that possible? How does DNA affect your life? And how is it possible that a species of humans who lived more than 400,000 years ago has found its way into your DNA? Stay tuned to find out. The human DNA is the molecule that carries the genetic instructions for life. In its most elementary state, DNA is a double helix molecule composed of two strands coiled around each other. It contains the genetic blueprint for the development, functioning, growth and reproduction of all known organisms and consists of four nucleotides, adenine, A, thymine, T, cytosine, C, and guanine, G. But did ours evolve? Around four to two million years ago, early hominins like Australopithecus afarensis roamed Africa. These species had DNA more similar to that of modern apes, but ultimately began showing the first signs of divergence towards the human lineage. Over time, their genetic makeup enabled bipedalism, which was a significant evolutionary step that freed up their hands for tool use and other functions. About 2.5 million years ago, our genus Homo emerged, marking a significant leap in human evolution. The Homo habilis is often considered the first member of this genus, known for its use of simple stone tools. This, however, was possible because genetic changes in the species likely supported better hand-eye coordination and cognitive functions. Following Homo habilis, Homo erectus appeared, spreading from Africa to Asia and Europe. This species exhibited significant increases in brain size, suggesting DNA changes that enhanced cognitive abilities and social behaviors. Around 300,000 years ago, the Homo sapiens emerged in Africa with significant DNA differences from earlier species. These changes included genes associated with brain development, such as those regulating brain size and cognitive functions. It also showed evidence of rapid evolution in genes related to language and social behavior, and ultimately helped in supporting the development of complex societies. The evolution of our DNA was the driving force behind our evolution, the reason we grew, and why we are who we are today. In fact, throughout human evolution, several key genetic adaptations played crucial roles. For example, Changes in genes like ASPM and HAR1 supported the development of larger brains and advanced cognitive abilities, allowing for complex thought, language, and even culture. Some genetic mutations even enabled some human populations to digest lactose into adulthood, which is largely the reason for our diet today. Besides this, other metabolic adaptations allowed humans to thrive in diverse environments from the high altitudes of Tibet to the Arctic cold. The evolution of DNA even found its way into our tools as it influenced the development of sophisticated tools and technologies. This is because early stone tools evolved into complex weapons and agricultural implements, driven by the cognitive advances encoded in human DNA. But not only technology and biology were affected, because cultural expressions such as art and symbolic thinking emerged, supported by genetic changes that enhanced brain function. Essentially, the evolution of human DNA is the story of the adaptability and resilience of our species. From the early hominins to modern humans, genetic changes have driven key developments in brain function, immune response, and even social behavior. So that raises the question, if our DNA evolves according to our needs, how is it possible that it might not be completely ours? It's no secret that we get our DNA from our parents, theirs from theirs, and so on and so forth. But what will surprise you is that if you go far enough back, there is a possibility that you might have gotten your DNA from Neanderthals. Yes, a caveman. 
See, interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans occurred during a period when their populations overlapped in Europe and Asia, roughly between 50,000 and 60,000 years ago. This might come as a shock, but different species of humans lived together at the same time and even interacted with each other. Modern humans, also known as Homo sapiens, migrated out of Africa around 60,000 to 70,000 years ago. As they moved into Europe and Asia, they encountered Neanderthals, aka Homo neanderthalensis, aka cavemen, who had been living in these regions for hundreds of thousands of years. In areas where Neanderthals and modern humans lived in close proximity, it is easy to see why interactions were inevitable. These interactions likely included a mix of competition, cooperation, and cultural exchange. And shockingly, during this time of overlap, interbreeding events even occurred. In fact, genetic evidence reveals that these events happened multiple times, resulting in children who carried a mix of Neanderthal and modern human genes. And over generations, these genes were passed down. Today, it is estimated that 1-4% to of the DNA in non-African modern humans is derived from Neanderthals. So you could have Neanderthal DNA in you. On average, Neanderthal DNA makes up about 2% of the genetic material in the Eurasian populations, with East Asians showing slightly higher percentages, up to 4%. Researchers have proposed that this higher proportion of Neanderthal DNA in East Asians might be due to the multiple waves of interbreeding or different demographic histories between Europe and Asia. For instance, the dilution of Neanderthal ancestry in Europe could be attributed to the mixing of early European hunter-gatherers with Neolithic farmers from Anatolia who carried less Neanderthal DNA. But how do we even know this? Well, the integration of Neanderthal DNA into modern human genomes was first confirmed in 2010 when the sequencing of Neanderthal and modern human genomes confirmed these interbreeding events by showing shared genetic markers between the two groups. In fact, according to the research, some of the inherited Neanderthal genes have even been linked to specific traits in modern humans, such as aspects of the immune system and even the color of your skin. Some Neanderthal genes may have even provided advantages for survival in certain climates or conditions which helped these genes persist in modern human populations. These interbreeding events were extremely mind-boggling when discovered because they painted a picture that modern humans and Neanderthals were not entirely separate species, but were capable of producing fertile offspring. But why did they mate? To understand this, the nature of interactions between Neanderthals and modern humans would have been influenced by various factors, including environmental conditions, available resources, and even cultural practices. Ultimately, it was bound to happen, and it did. So now, how did it affect our evolution? The interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals had profound evolutionary implications for our ancestors and ended up resulting in the transfer of Neanderthal genes into modern human genomes. This genetic inheritance influenced a range of traits and adaptations that helped and also hindered early modern humans' survival. For example, the Neanderthal genes contributed to several traits that provided adaptive advantages, particularly as early Homo sapiens migrated into diverse and often harsh climates across Eurasia. One major instance is the fact that the Neanderthal genes affected skin pigmentation, helping early modern humans adapt to varying levels of sunlight exposure in different regions. These genetic changes likely aided in vitamin D synthesis in areas with less sunlight. But that's not all, because Neanderthal DNA influenced hair texture and thickness, which provided insulation and protection against cold climates. This adaptation would have been especially beneficial in the colder environments that Neanderthals inhabited. Besides this, several immune system genes of Neanderthal origin played a critical role in helping early humans fend off pathogens these genes enhance the immune response, providing a selective advantage in combating infections and diseases prevalent in Eurasian environments. The effects of the Neanderthal DNA never actually stopped with our ancestors, as the DNA continues to influence modern humans' health with both beneficial and detrimental effects. For example, 
Neanderthal gene variants have been linked to enhanced immune responses. We know this because genes related to toll-like receptors, TLRs, which detect pathogens and trigger immune responses, have a significant amount of Neanderthal DNA. These genetic contributions likely helped early humans better defend against local diseases and infections. However, while some Neanderthal genes bolstered immune defenses, they also increased susceptibility to certain autoimmune conditions. For example, variants associated with an increased risk of lupus, Crohn's disease, and biliary cirrhosis have been traced back to our Neanderthal ancestry. This suggests a kind of trade-off where enhanced immune function against pathogens comes with a higher risk of immune system dysregulation. Additionally, Neanderthal DNA has been linked to traits affecting metabolism and development. Apparently, certain Neanderthal genes influence the metabolic rate and the ability to process fats and sugars, which could have helped early humans adapt to the nutritional resources available in their new environments. The mixing of Neanderthal and human genes didn't just help with survival, but also left a lasting mark on human evolution. Useful Neanderthal genes were kept through natural selection, while harmful ones were gradually removed over time. As a result, modern humans carry a mosaic of Neanderthal-derived genes that continue to affect our biology. The incorporation of Neanderthal DNA increased genetic diversity in non-African populations, providing a broader genetic toolkit for adaptation to new environments and enhancing the overall resilience of human populations as they spread across the globe. Some studies suggest that Neanderthal genes might have even influenced behavioral and neurological traits in modern humans. For instance, genes linked to circadian rhythms and sleep patterns surprisingly show Neanderthal influence. Essentially, it affects how modern humans adapt to day-night cycles and seasonal changes in light. The exchange of genes between Neanderthals and modern humans might have also facilitated cultural and social adaptations as enhanced immune responses could have supported denser, more complex communities by reducing the impact of infectious diseases. In the end, the interbreeding between Neanderthals and modern humans had significant evolutionary implications, shaping various traits and adaptations in contemporary human populations. The Neanderthal genes provided critical advantages and aided early humans in their expansion across diverse environments. Although your DNA is unquestionably yours, in actuality, it is the combination of millions of years of evolution stored in the code that makes you who you are. You might differ from your neighbor, but you are all the embodiment of years of evolution. And in your code, the legacy of countless human species lives and flourishes. But what do you think about all this? Do you think you have a little caveman in you? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why not hit the like and subscribe button to learn more about the past? Until next time.